Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice of radio, so I've made a podcast. But we're not watching a podcast today. No, 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 no. We are watching a video from the St. Austell down in Cornwall in the UK Regional Championships. Now, this happened in the expanded format, so all the sets are legal from black and white all the way through to breakpoint. We are playing 50 minutes, and we are playing best of three. Huge thank you to Vinnie Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for making us especially welcome and comfortable and doing everything they could to help. They are lovely, lovely people. If you're in the area, if you're in Cornwall in the UK, check them out. As always, ladies and gentlemen, grab yourself a nice cold beverage or warm, I don't want to tell you what to do, and enjoy this game from St. Austell Regional Championships. Best of three, 50 minutes, black and white to break point. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so on the left we have got John Cormack. He is going to be playing Raikou with Magnazo. Not sure about the eels, we'll see what goes on. On the right we've got Corey Kirkham, no stranger to this particular stream, this particular channel. Corey's popped up a few times. He is going to be playing Mega Rayquaza. And straight away he's got a Rayquaza with a DCE and a Spirit Link. He uses Hooper EX's ability Scoundrel Ring to search out any free EX Pokemon. And he's gone for a Mega Rayquaza. Remember, he's got that Delta Evolution Ancient trait that makes him allows him to evolve straight away. And with the Spirit Link already, you don't have to end your turn to do so. And he grabs a Shaman so that he can draw until he's got six cards in his hand. And he grabs a Jirachi to make sure that he can grab whatever supporter he likes. And the supporter he likes is Getsis. And he's playing the gets this straight away. Oh, okay. Now, that's not so bad. John loses a few cards, but John has got a Professor Sycamore. Gets this, allows you to look at your opponent's hand. They shuffle all their item cards back in. You get to draw one card for every item they shuffle in. So, the, the theory here is that they shuffle in all their good item cards, their trainers' mails and such. And if they don't have a Shaman or a Supporter, they are up a creek, proverbially speaking. Good news is, John has got a Sycamore, so it's not the end of the world. So Corey here is getting a nice, decent setup. He's got his Skyfield, which is his stadium of choice. It allows him to have eight bench Pokemon. Allows both players to have bench Pokemon, eight bench Pokemon as it happens. And he plays an Ultra Ball. For another Hooper. Double Hooper all the way across the sky. He is going for it, ladies and gentlemen. He wants a nice full bench nice and quickly. And why not? Now, he gets rid of an energy. That's a good thing. Because he can use Mega Turbo to attach it to a Mega Rayquaza. That's an item card. Getting rid of a VS Seeker. Not something you want to do. But needs must, ladies and gentlemen. Needs must. Now, the good news here is that there, there is a decent chance John is going to be playing a stadium of his own. And if John plays a stadium of his own and gets rid of that Skyfield, Corey will have to discard bench Pokemon until he's got five remaining. But he can get rid of things like the Shaman and the Jirachi and all of that, if he so wishes. So you actually see that he got another Rayquaza and a Mega with the Hooper. And because he had a Spirit Link... He actually got a second Mega Rayquaza ready to go, and he hits the Mega Turbo. So in one turn here, Corey's got, is that seven bench Pokemon? And he's got two Mega Rayquaza evolved up, and he's got all three requisite energy for the attack on the one Rayquaza. And that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty good. Oh, and Johnny actually had to, he did shuffle in that scramble switch with a gets this. He's drawn into it. Which is not ideal. That's his one A spec. You can have one A spec of any description in your deck, but only one A spec. John has chosen Scramble Switch and he's had to discard it. He top decked it off the Sycamore straight away, which is, shall we say, ladies and gentlemen, less than ideal because now that's gone away and he can't have it back. So he gets a Fighting Fury Belt. He pops out on the Raikou. That means Raikou has now got 160 HP, which, of course, is very good because he also, if you if you have a, an electric energy attached to him, his ability kicks in, which reduces damage done by 20, which gives him an effective HP of 180. 
Now that is important. Mega Rayquaza's ability, uh, attack sorry, does 30 damage times the number of bench Pokemon that you have. If John is able to replace the stadium, that means that Corey can only have 5 bench Pokemon, which means Rayquaza's attack maxes out at 150. Ordinary Raikou, 120. With an Electric Energy, 140. With a Fighting Fury Belt, 180. Meaning that, it, in fact, he only really needs a Fighting Fury Belt. What it does mean is that he's in a wonderful position where now Corey is going to have to have the Sky Field out and have a bench full of Pokemon. There's no possibility here that... John is going to be that Corey is going to be able to get the KO if John replaces the stadium. And that, gonna be honest, ladies and gentlemen, pretty darn useful. Pretty darn useful indeed. So, John there, he gets the Ultra Ball. We see the Magna Zone there, that's pretty useful. That is, of course, the Magna Zone that allows you to rain down energy as if it were candy. By which I mean it allows you to attach as many energy as you like. Useful, of course. So it looks like John is not going to be playing the electric that some decks do play along with Raikou. Raikou takes a minimum of free energy to attack. So it's one of those where you really do want to have a... You know, you, you want to have a way to accelerate energy. And John has got that with his Magnazone. Will be interesting to see if he also plays one of the Plasma Magnazone. That's the one that allows you to play two supporters per turn. Now, there's a whole bunch of players who essentially would be thinking, well, you know what? As I'm, as I'm playing Magnazone anyway, I might as well go ahead and... Play one of the Plasma ones, because why not? Now, that was a Magnemite, and John did just attach with it. And it was Shock Generator. Flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. Now, I'm not entirely sure if he had heads or not. I think the coin flip went off camera. It is, of course, irrelevant. Corey has a Caldea with a Floatstone. Now, I've done a bunch of videos from regionals lately. And you'll notice that an obscene amount of decks use Caldeo with Floatstone, or as we saw in the previous video with the Darkrai Mirror match, some dark decks use dark, uh, Caldeo with a Dark Energy, which is the same thing. Either way, it means that you can use Caldeo's Rush in to jump in the active, and then Floatstone to retreat him for free. I.e., Rayquaza's in the active paralyzed, Caldeo jumps in, he then retreats to put Rayquaza back in the active, but there's a general rule in Pokemon whereby when you've gone back to the bench, there is any effects that were on the active, including special conditions, have gone away. Now, Corey there played a Hex Maniac, and that is absolutely vital in this particular matchup. It is incredibly important. And the reason is, he has a weakness. Now, to put it frank, John is at a massive, massive advantage here. Make no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. John is at a huge advantage. And the reason is, those Raikou, well, it does 50 damage, plus 20 for each electric energy attached to it. So you, for a minimum of three. So you put three on there, you do 110 damage. But Rayquaza is weak to electric. Now, some Rayquaza players in the past, and we're going to get a supporter coming out here. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? It's going to be a Sycamore comes out with the VS Seeker. So some electric players, electric, no, some Rayquaza players have played the Altaria. Now, the Altaria also has a Delta Revolution Ancient trait, which means you can evolve it straight away, and it takes away all the weakness of your colorless Pokemon. Long story short, it's too clunky, it takes away, and the best Rayquaza decks have proven to be the really, really fast ones that can just go ahead and start smashing nice and quickly. So, that, that's what they do. So, they don't play Altaria. 
That means that if you end up with one of these Rayquaza decks, and it looks like we're seeing a, a Super Rod here. No, a Sacred. No, it is a Super Rod. Allows you to search free in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy back into your deck. Oh, there it is, right on the top there. So without Altaria, that makes Electric decks very, very good against Rayquaza. A Raikou with free energy will one-hit KO it for two prizes, and then it gets KO'd back with six bench Pokemon for one prize. So if John here gets his Magnazone out and peppers a bunch of energy down, he's going to be fine. But the Raikou takes free energy. How does John get the energy on there? Using Magnazone's ability. So Corey wants to be playing Hex Maniac every single turn. Now he didn't play it turn one because he knew that John could not get a turn one Magnazone. The rules of evolution do not work that way. So because John couldn't get a turn one Magnazone, Corey doesn't play it. On turn two, Corey plays a Hex Maniac, and that turns off all abilities until the end of your opponent's next turn. That means that John is not going to be able to use that Magnazone in order to put all that energy down onto the Raikou. It's going to buy him a little bit of time. It's not ideal, but it's all right. And Corey's taken a prize. Now, Corey's got a whole bunch more prizes left to take, ladies and gentlemen. He is, shall we say, not out of the woods yet. But... It's a start. He's going to need to repeat this trick every single turn. Now, we saw on turn one, he actually had to go and discard a, a VS Seeker, which gives him one less, and that's a Tails on the Paralysis, but it doesn't matter because Caldeo EX. So he's going to need all the VS Seekers he can get. Because there is every... Well, actually, no, this turn he doesn't. But usually, there's every possibility. John's just going to go, Rare Candy, Evolve Magnemite directly into Magnazone, and Pepper a whole bunch of energy. Here, however, John only has one Magnemite on the field. Corey is about to KO this Magnemite. So there is no point Corey playing a Hex Maniac because that Magnazone is not coming out. So you see that he plays an AZ instead to go and draw into a whole bunch of cards. Because he's going to want to... He, he's already KO'd that Magnemite. What that means is there is no Magnazone coming from John. You cannot evolve a Pokemon the turn it hits the field. So John benches a Magnemite this turn. Next turn, he can evolve it to a Magneton, or he can use the item card Rare Candy. And if you play a Rare Candy and a Magnazone at the same time, it allows you to pop it straight into it. So you, you can evolve straight from Magnemite up to Magnazone. Now, what would be really good here is, and that looks like a Bridget coming down, allows them to search for free basic Pokemon, and they go straight onto your bench. We saw in a previous video a, a slight misplay when a, this is very early on, right after it came out. A slight misplay where a player, which I remain nameless, go back and watch all my videos if you wish, put them into their hand, but it goes straight onto the bench. It nullifies Bridget a little bit, of course, because the problem is that what Bridget would be really good for is searching out, say, a Magnemite, a Raikou, and a Shaman. To draw some more cards. But you can't do that. Which is why Bridget isn't played in great, great numbers. Believe me, it would be played in huge numbers if it was to your hand. Eh, maybe not huge numbers. But it would see play. A lot of EX decks, of course, like we saw with Corey. They use that Hooper EX to search for free EXs, including Shaman. So, John has to pass here. But it, it's not the end of the world. John is far from on the back foot this game. Corey has taken a prize. And, spoiler alert, Corey is going to take a prize. Sorry, Corey's taken two prizes. So here's how the prize trade will work if John gets everything he wants. Corey takes his third prize, John takes two. Corey takes his fourth prize, John takes two. Corey takes his fifth prize, John wins the game. So... John can afford to go three prizes down here because he's KOing EXs. And even if the Rayquazas go down, he can use Lysander to pick off some Shaman. Even if 
John goes three prizes down. He's still in a position to win the prize race. Now, there goes the rough seas, which means Corey is going to have to get rid of Pokemon. And he's going to get rid of those weak EXs. Why would he not? However, John has still got three EXs there. The two Rayquaza and the Jirachi, which he can KO to win the game. Here's the problem, though. Corey played a Hex Maniac last turn. Which means that there is no possibility here of John getting a Magnazone. And this is the only way for Corey to win the game. Save John just not drawing anything and not being able to set up. Corey is not going to win this game if they play a regular game. If they play the usual, uh, it's free retreat due to the ability on the, on the Magnazone. So John's putting up a Raikou here. I'm not a huge fan of this play. Now, I know he needs a Magnazone, but he needs a Raikou as well. Now, if there was a Fighting Fury bout on the Raikou, I'd be all in favour of it. Oh, it's, a, it's irrelevant anyway. Corey gets a Skyfield down. Now, he'll still need a sixth Pokemon to get the KO if there's a Fighting Fury bout. Well, obviously, there isn't, so he doesn't. But we know that Corey has actually got an Execute in the discard pile. And Execute has an ability, Propagation, that allows you to put it into your hand, which in the Rayquaza deck does a couple of really cool things, as Corey plays an Octoball to grab a Shaman. First of all, it allows you to propagate the Execute, and then discard it as one of your two cards to use Ultra Ball or Computer Search. And you can play, say, two Ultra Balls and one Computer Search in the same turn. And you can use the same Execute to pay half of the cost for all three cards. But also, you can go, oh, I need a sixth bench Pokemon. And Corey here plays another Hex Maniac for the same reason. Because you'll often be facing down the X's of 170 or 180 HP. And most decks play stadiums. So as the Rayquaza player, you're hitting for however much. Your opponent replaces a stadium. You're now hitting 150. If you haven't got an execute in a discard pile, then you have to find a stadium. And then, and it has to be after, because otherwise you can't bench it. Then you have to find another basic Pokemon. But with execute, you can go, oh, I found the stadium, put it down. And then if you don't have a basic Pokemon for the bench, that's where Execute can come in and be the sixth one. So, John has man... Oh, and that's just depressing. He's manually attached two energy to the Raikou. He was going to get a KO next turn on that Rayquaza. Corey plays a Lysand, and now that does... It gives a tiny bit of hope to John here. Except I don't think it actually... No, it's irrelevant. This is irrelevant. John's lost the game here. Because Corey's got another Rayquaza. Corey's now got one prize left. Best case scenario for John. He gets a Magnazone up. He puts enough energy onto a Raikou to get the KO. And then Corey just brings up the other Rayquaza that's on the bench. And then he gets the KO with him. So unfortunately, and it, it's sad and all that, and we can all sit and cry about it if we like, the reality is that John has lost this game. Now we're in a best of... Uh, oh, he does play the Plasma Magnazone. That is the Plasma Magnazone. You can tell it's a Plasma card by the... I want to say blue border. Maybe it's purple. I'm a bit colorblind, ladies and gentlemen. I've always called it blue. But maybe it's purple. I don't really know. I don't really accept purple as a colour. If purple is your favourite colour, please feel free to pop it in the comments with hashtag don't hate on purple. But to be perfectly honest, not a big fan of purple. Just because I don't really understand it. So, John's carrying on valiantly here. But honestly, his best bet is to just to scoop. My scoop, I mean to voluntarily give the win to Corey and move on to game two. Because we're, and I, I don't have an exact timer in front of me, but we're something like 20 minutes into the game here. And he just needs to move on. He can still win the series. It's a best of three series, so he can lose game one, win game two, win game three. And he wins a series overall. But the longer he takes to lose game one, the less time he has remaining to try and win games two and three. And that is inconvenient. So John basically says, right, you've won this game. There's now I can do. And this is an interesting game. Now, 
to be honest, and I well, I pick these games based on a number of factors. When I'm when I'm picking the games to go on stream, there's three things I'm thinking about. Who are the players involved? Obviously, and I, I've heard this from people who watch my channel, and I've I've done my research. People want to see good players, known players, and players who have or will attend worlds. Have attended or will attend worlds. Simple as that. People want to see unusual or lesser played decks. And people want to see players with good records. So that's what I look at. I look at who's got a good record, who are the noteworthy players, and what decks are they playing. And here we are, we're in round three. So I wanted a couple of players who were doing well. I think it might be that Corey's 2-0 and... It could be that Corey's 2-0 and, and John's 101 or something like that. They're both doing pretty well. And these are unusual decks. But I must confess, when I picked this game for the stream, there was a part of me that said, well... Rayquaza against Raikou. I mean, can I in good conscience put that on the stream? I envisaged a game where John sits down, Corey cries a little bit, and then we have like a 20-minute game. Now, given that we're 20 minutes into the video, we know this ain't going to be a 20-minute game. And essentially what this game comes down to is very simply John setting up and Corey playing Hex Maniac. And that's basically it. I, we, the thing about these Rayquaza decks is they are made for speed. They play four Shaman and we've seen that Corey plays two Hooper. And quite frankly, there is an awful lot of consistency cards in Corey's deck. These Rayquaza decks, and they've been around since Roaring Skies came out, and they're one of these decks, and this happens after a while. It's actually, it's recently happened to Greninja. No one knew how to play Greninja, but recently people have figured it out. Same thing happened with Rayquaza, but a little while ago. Now... Rayquaza, we know how it's made. We know how to go about making a good Rayquaza deck. And they are fast and they are consistent. I played it myself at Norwich Regionals, the regionals before this. And one of the things about Rayquaza, one of the things I liked about it was it just sets up. You don't draw dead. Now, I played two Raikou Eels. And in both games, now one of them I misplayed pretty horrifically, but in neither of them could I actually get set up well enough and play Hex Maniac often enough to survive the onslaught. Corey, however, he did very well in game one. So there is every likelihood he can do the same again. But that's what it's going to have to take. John just needs to get set up. Corey is going to have to not only get set up, but play Hex Maniac every turn. And that's very, very awkward. Because he's going to need to be drawing cards while playing Hex Maniac, which means he's not going to be playing another supporter. And going second is also pretty big. We saw last time Corey used turn one to go nuts with Hooper, Shaman, etc. And then John couldn't use his abilities turn one, so Corey could Hex on turn two. But here, John's going first. John gets the first turn of the game. Which means he's already, well, no, he's already got a Magnemite down, as we can see, and he plays a double Battle Compressor here. This means that he's going to basically be able to... Put it, assuming he gets everything he needs. Next turn, he's going to be able to use Magnezone. Which means Corey is going to need a turn one Hex Maniac 
and he's going to need to set up his Rayquaza like he did last time. Now, you see what John's doing here. He's just dumping a whole bunch of supporters in the discard. Why is he dumping all those supporters in the discard? Because we've got this incredibly powerful item card, VS Seeker, that allows you to grab any supporter you like out of your discard pile. So what players like to do now, and it is an incredibly popular tactic, it's one of the things that makes that card Battle Compressor so gosh darn good, is you basically dump whatever you want in the discard pile, and then when you draw into VS Seeker, you can then turn it into any supporter card that you like. Now, John does not have a VS Seeker, unfortunately, which is inconvenient, but it would have been nice, and you see that the next card of his deck was a VS Seeker. It would have been really good if he'd been able to play a... If he'd been able to play his own Getsis, not dissimilar to what we saw from Corey last turn. That would have been quite nice. So we see one Magnemite down. Now there is a possibility, and it's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, but there is a possibility here that Corey could try and Lysander that lone Magnemite. He doesn't need to play a Hex Maniac if there's no possibility of John being able to evolve the Magnemite. Let's be clear on this. Yeah, Magnemite has got an ability which reduces retreat cost, the other Magnemite. I think we saw John play one. And yeah, John's got the two Raikou that have the ability that reduces energy by two, but, uh, excuse me, reduces damage by two if you've got a lightning energy attached. Let's be clear on this. They are not what John's going for. John really wants to have the Magnemite ability. That's the key. So he grabs a Shaman here, a slightly risky move, of course, because Corey can always play Lysander, KO that with a Rayquaza, and grab two prizes. And we've seen John plays the prize race game. As a matter of course, I would not have attached that energy to the active Raikou. The reason is very simple. If that Raikou gets KO'd this turn, he loses the energy. Whereas if you put it on the benched Raikou, then at least if Corey takes a prize, he doesn't get rid of your only energy as well. You'll also notice John used an Ultra Ball to grab a Shaman, not a Magnemite, but then didn't play the Shaman. And we know that Corey is going to be trying... <laughs> Both players double Battle Compressor on turn one. And there's that Hex Maniac that Corey's going to try and grab out. And we see he's got the Execute there as well. Um... Corey's going to be trying to Hex Maniac, so it's going to be interesting if Corey does Hex Maniac. That is a very bad Ultra Ball there for John. John could have gone and got on a second Magnemite and helped him set up. As we saw in the previous game, there is every possibility that Corey is going to start KOing those Magnemites very, very quickly indeed. And that is bad news bears for John. If he's not able to keep a Magnemite on the field, he ain't ever getting a Magnezone. Now, we see that Execute in action there. Corey used the, Magnus, uh, the Execute's ability to uh, pop it into his hand. And then, when he played the Ultra Ball, he discarded a Grass Energy from his hand. Obviously, to try and fuel that Mega Turbo card I mentioned. And he discards the Execute. It means he doesn't have to discard a second card from his hand. And clearly, there's none that he wants to. As a general rule, you know, Shaman allows you to draw until you've got six cards in your hand. So as a general rule, you want to empty your hand as much as possible, have as few cards in your hand as possible, so that you can draw as many cards as possible with Shaman. So, clearly, the fact that Corey used the Execute to reduce the cost of using that Ultra Ball showed us somewhat conclusively that he really didn't want to discard anything in his hand. Now, as it happened, there was a floatstone there that we know he needs for the Caldeo, and we had he had two Skyfields in his hand. Now, he doesn't need to play both of those Skyfields right now. He only needs to play one. But John has already shown that he plays counter stadiums, so what Corey doesn't want to do is end up in a situation where he runs out of Skyfield, and John, the phrase we tend to use is, wins the stadium war. So there's a VS Seeker, and it's an N. Interesting. Because if John wins a Stadium War, Corey is sat there, and he is limited to 150 damage for the rest of the game. Winning the Stadium War basically means your opponent runs out of stadiums, and your stadium remains in the active for the remainder of the game. 
if that happens, then John can start putting Fighting Fury belts onto the Raikou, and then Corey is unable to get one-hit KOs. Now, we know that Corey plays the supporter card Zerosic that allows him to discard a tool attached to one of his opponent's Pokemon, or indeed his own, or indeed a special energy. The problem is, if Corey plays as a Rosic to get rid of the Fighting Fury belt to get a KO, he's not playing Hex Maniac. And as we saw and discussed in the previous game, if we get to a situation where Corey is not playing Hex Maniac, John will be doing a giddy dance of joy on his insides. That will be a good time for him. So we see a couple of trainers mail from Corey there. The first one got him a spirit link for his Rayquaza. Allows him to Mega Revolve without ending his turn, as a Mega Revolution usually would. Second one gets him a VS Seeker, and that's good. Now, you notice in John's previous turn, he started discarding a whole bunch of cards from his deck. He was... He, um... What did he do? He, he used a Professor's Letter to grab a couple of Electric Energy and discarded them with Ultra Ball. He used a couple of battle compressors and the point of this is the fewer cards he has in his deck the more likely it is that he top decks draws into what the cards that he wants and the cards that he wants are very much rare candy magnazone and to probably a, a lysander to be perfectly honest now, you notice Corey's actually playing the Dragon Rayquaza, which means until he Mega Revolves, he's not weak to Lightning, which makes it very difficult to get the KO for, for John there. He's also gone and put a Virizion in the active. Why would he do that? Well, virizion has got, I believe, 170 HP, which means it's going to take 6 energy to get the KO with Raikou. 20 damage per energy is 120, plus a 50 base is 170. And Corey doesn't need that Virizion. Now, the reason he plays Virizion is because it's got an ability, which means that any Pokemon on your side of the field that has a basic grass energy attached cannot be affected by special conditions. And that's a problem when you play some of these dark decks, etc., some of these Seismitoad decks that are playing Hypnotoxic Laser. So Corey plays Basic Grass and Virizion EX so that those decks cannot use Hypnotoxic Laser to inflict poison and potentially sleep onto his Rayquazas, making them easier to KO. Well, we know that John is not playing any special conditions. So it doesn't really matter here if... Corey loses that Virizion. So he puts a Virizion in the active and goes, you know what? Do it. Oh, okay. Here we... This is more like it from John. Now he gets the rare candy. He evolves up to Magnazone. And he gets to play a Shaman for six cards and zero energy. Oh, that's nice. Now he's got the Fighting Fury belt, which means now we, I believe actually, to be fair, I'm getting all excited here. I'm pretty sure Corey, no, Corey played the end, didn't he? He did have a Skyfield in, no, he's got a Skyfield in hand. We see it there. Although, no, okay, he's got two Skyfield in hand and a VS Seeker. Corey's hand is fine. Now, John's discarded a whole bunch of energy. And he's got a Fisherman in the discard. So, is he playing a VS? If he's got a VS Seeker here, he can play a Fisherman and get four energy back. The problem is, he's got all that energy attached to... He's got that energy attached to the active Raikou. And, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, that Raikou is... It's not doing much good right now. It's not going to get the KO on the Virizion. One of the things that John would be really good doing here is just sitting there and going... Did he not have a fisherman in the discard? If he had a fisherman in the discard, he wanted to play it then. Grab the energy out of the discard, get free energy on that bench Raikou. And if he, I don't know exactly how many he's got, but maybe even get an energy on the active as well. Because if he can get a whole bunch of energy down, he's going to win the game. Because the only thing Corey can do then is start... Well, he can attack with something like a Virizion, which will get easily two-hit KO'd, while not one-hit KOing the, Ra the Raikou. Or he can KO the Raikou with the Mega Rayquaza and then get hit back for weakness, and we know that's not the way to win the game. But unfortunately, now, super rodding the energy back in here would be good. If he can super rod all three of those energy, 
unless he needs some of the Pokemon. But I would super on all free energy. Is that? Yeah. And then play in the Sycamore. He's getting down to a fairly small deck here. So hopefully, and he's only got one energy on the field. Now he's got none in the discard. So the idea here is that he's already played a whole bunch of cards. He can play the Sycamore. Draw seven cards, and he must have a whole bunch of energy in his deck. And any energy he... Oh, there's one. Any energy he draws into here, he can immediately pop down onto those Raikou. Oh, there's three. So, what he wants to do here is attach free energy to his benched Raikou. No, he doesn't. I'm lying to you. Oh, I don't know. See, there's a decision to be made here with the energy. If he puts them all onto his benched Raikou, then Corey can play a Lysander to KO it, although he then can't also play a Hex Maniac. But if he puts it onto his active Raikou and, you know, half KOs the Verizian, then Corey can't. Then Corey can get the KO and play a Hex Maniac. So I think you've got to attach the energy to the benched Raikou here. Attach free energy to that bench Raikou, and then basically put down the gauntlet. Okay, well he at least needs to put one on the bench Raikou as well. Because what he doesn't want to do here is end up in a situation where Corey brings up the Rayquaza, gets the KO on the Raikou while playing a Hex Maniac, and... Then John, yeah. See here, if Corey plays a Hex Maniac, John has no Raikou next turn. And that's a bad position to be in. And we know Corey's got a VS Seeker, but he doesn't have the requisite energy yet. So we see a propagation there, and he's got to get rid of a Skyfield, which means this Skyfield coming down for Corey is going to be number three. Now we know he plays four. All, re like I say, requires a list at this stage. There's very little variation. So. He's going to be playing four Skyfield. You have to play four Skyfield. But it means that he's he's running out of Skyfield at this stage. And he's got to put one down to get the KO. And, yeah, he only needs one more basic. Because, like I said, the, the Raikou's got an effective HP of 180. That's six bench Pokemon for Corey. Now, the other consideration here is does he have enough energy? Because if I see correctly, that Rayquaza on the bench, I'm sitting and going, Corey's going to do this, Corey's going to do that. Corey only has a double... Oh, no, he's fine. Because he's got a Mega Turbo in hand. So he plays the Mega Turbo. We know he discarded a Grass Energy earlier. So he uses the Mega Turbo to get the Grass Energy on the Rayquaza. He's going to play the VS Seeker so that he can pop down a Hex Maniac. And then he's going to get the KO. But I think John made a misplay here. I don't think doing 120 to the active Verizium was really all that and a bag of potato chips. So I think the far better play would have been to attach the free energy to the bench Raikou. And gone, you know what? Maybe you can hit a Lysander and kill the Raikou while setting up your Rayquaza, because at the time he didn't even have the Mega. So, I, if I were John, I would have done that. And he'd throw down the Gorn. In the worst case scenario, Corey Lysanders KOs the Raikou, but you then are not ability locked. There can be no Lysander and Hex Maniac. Now, weirdly, if John gets his Plasma Magnazone out, he actually can play two supporters in one turn. But Corey can't. Neither can Jake Wolvin. So, I think John played into Corey's hands there. Because now he's not got a Raikou and he's two energy to get the KO. And he's only got one energy. And that's a problem. So, he's going to need to attach to the Raikou... And he's going to need to, the, the, the phrase I use is, feed Corey a prize. No, Raikou. 
Because if he pops it on the Magnemite and tries for the Paralysis, we know there's going to be a rush in and retreat. What he needs to do here is attach an energy to the Raikou and, and essentially feed Corey a prize. Give him a Magnemite. Let Corey KO a Magnemite. You've already got a Magnazone on the bench. You've got another Magnemite. So you let Corey KO a Magnemite and you basically say, all right, look, you're going to KO the Magnemite, but remember the prize trade. John can just come up and KO that Rayquaza and then they'll actually be even on prizes. Once again, Corey can Lysander the Raikou, but then he won't be able to Hex Maniac. Or Corey can Hex Maniac, but he won't be able to Lysander the Raikou. And the ideal for John is here that he starts KOing these Rayquaza, and we end up in a situation where Corey has got to stop using Hex Maniac because he needs to set up. He needs to get those Rayquazas. He needs to get that energy. You only have the luxury of building up those Rayquaza, of playing Hex Maniac, when you've got Rayquazas ready to go. If you need to build up the Rayquazas, then you have to basically sit there and not play the Hex Maniac while you try and draw cards to set up those Rayquazas. So while we've got a minute in the game, I should... Yeah, and we see a Lysander on the Hooper here, but it's a wasted supporter because Corey's just going to rush in and retreat with the Caldeo. I should mention at this stage, John is a, John's a newer player, so let's be, you know, I'm putting out all these plays. I've been playing Pokemon for many, many years, and I, well, you just look at my YouTube channel. I commentate these games all the time. I've got a lot of experience playing these. We have got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes there are newer players there. Players who haven't played in many tournaments, players who are just getting used to the game. John's a lovely chap, and I believe he said he actually watches. So, hey, John. And, you know, yes, I'm pointing out things that could have been done better and misplays. It's what I do in these videos. It's, it's what makes them interesting, both in terms of watching and commentating. But let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. Some players are newer and getting used to the game, and that's not a bad thing. So I'm pointing out misplays here, but... Oh my goodness. I mean, if you want an example of a misplay, go and watch my top four game. And it was actually from this very venue. It was a top four city championship. My Garchomp began jo against Josh Poet Pierce's Night March. If you want to see a ridiculous misplay, and to be honest, I have no excuse. I really should know better. Go and watch my game against Josh Poet Pierce in the top four from the city championship at this venue. Put it this way. I had a, well, whoever won our game had a really nice matchup in the final. And I misplayed my way out of top four. And it wasn't, all I needed to do was use Garchomp's attack to attach to him. And I would have won the game. Like, guaranteed. Go back and watch the video. You'll see it for yourself. So, yeah, I'm going to point out misplays. And that's fine. But let's be clear. Possibly the worst misplay on my channel is me in the top four of a city championship. The worst part is, as I sit here at the moment, I've got, I don't know, 260, 250 championship points. I've played a lot of silly decks like Mind Chow and Miltank Vileplume this season. I know I'm not going to world, so I've not been, you know, going into every tournament desperately trying to win. And put it this way. An extra 20 points from winning a tournament rather than getting top four would be very, very useful right about now. So, I believe we saw Corey play a Chorus there to draw some cards. I got, I got kind of into story mode, but I think he played a Chorus there, which means there's going to be no Hex Maniac, which is not good for him. And this is what I was saying before about needing to draw cards. You end up in this position. Now here, this, this next turn for John, this is going to be the money turn. If John can go ahead... Oh, what a play from Corey. He puts a double colorless on the Rayquaza and does 30 damage to the Magnemite. Because he's like, you know what? You, this, this is a Dragon-type Rayquaza. It's not weak to Lightning. I'm not going to get the KO. Which means John here, he's got to play a Lysander. 
and get that magnemite out of the active, which of course can be done by just attaching an energy with Magnazone. But he had to Sycamore. No Lysan, and this was the turn for John. This was the money turn. This was a turn where John could have turned around, get it, turned around? Where John could have turned around, KO'd that Rayquaza on the bench, got some more energy onto a fresh Raikou and gone, come at me, bro, come at me. One game two, and I think at this stage we're way too close to the end of the game uh, to, to realistically expect John to be able to win game two. But that was it. That's what it was going to take. And now I don't think there's any way back for John. We must be getting pretty close to time being called because it's 15 minutes plus three. And let's not forget that John's got three cards in his deck. And I haven't seen anything like an end from him yet that he could use to fill up his deck again. Although actually, to be fair, he ha he does play what looks like a few Super Rod more than one. So maybe he can play one of them. Although he's played at least one this game, if not two already. So I don't think John can take six prizes without decking out. I don't think John can take six prizes before time's called. And to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen... I don't think John can take six prizes. All that's going to happen here is he's going to do 110 to that Rayquaza. Corey's going to rush in and retreat with the Caldeo. He's going to get the KO with his Mega Rayquaza. He is going to use Hex Maniac to turn off John's abilities next turn. So John needs to put those two energy down. Okay. Now we're still on dodgy ground. We are on very dodgy ground. And by we, I, of course, mean John. But, John only needs one energy attachment next turn. So, what Corey can actually do here is, is maybe stall for time. Because if he puts a Rayquaza up and gets the KO, then John can just attach an energy to Raikou. If Corey stalls, then maybe time is called or maybe John decks out. Having said that, it depends on how many Lysanders John's got remaining. Because Corey can leave Hooper in the active to take a hit. He can leave Caldeo in the active to take a hit. But if John draws free Lysander, John wins the game. So, yeah. That's an awkward one for Corey here. Does he try and, and it depends how aware he is of time. I can tell you there's no clock in this little room of theirs. But it depends on how aware he is of time, to be honest. So, there's going to be no Hex Maniac this turn. And I can see where Corey's coming from. He needs to try and get set up. He needs to try and do some stuff. Because, and John, you know, if John had one energy on the Raikou, I think Hex Maniac is the way to go here. But Corey knows John's going to have enough energy to get a KO. Even if, well, as long as he's got one in hand. Even if Corey plays a um, Hex Maniac. So, it becomes less important. Now we see a Colrus here from Corey um, for 13 cards. That's pretty good. And as soon as Corey Mega revolves that Rayquaza, the weakness actually becomes irrelevant. As does that for it becomes a wasted hit. Because that Raikou is one hit KOing a fresh Mega Rayquaza. So if it's got 110 damage already done to it, it gets KO'd. If it's got zero damage already done to it, it gets KO'd. It makes no difference. So Corey Mega revolves it. I think Corey might just take the KO here, thinking, you know what? You're going to get a KO anyway. And I've looked through your discard. I don't think you're going to be able to stream Raikus. And then we see a, a Mega Turbo there from Corey, just to get that third energy. Because... Corey gets a KO here. John brings up a Raikou and KOs that Rayquaza. If Corey then gets a KO on the Raikou, John needs another Raikou and free energy. And at this stage, I think it's a legitimate question to ask. Does John have a third Raikou? Or another Raikou. I don't know if it's third or what. Does John have another Raikou? And I don't think he does. He doesn't have any energy. So we see the VS Seeker there grabbing a Fisherman. That allows him to get four basic energy from his discard pile into his hand. But John is going to be under the kibosh here because unless John can put some more cards into his deck 
and it's going to really come down to what's the last card in his decks. At the moment, he can't. He physically can't win this game. John takes two prizes, but then next turn, he draws the final card in his deck. So even if he takes four prizes, it comes back into his turn, and he decks out. So John takes some prizes, and this is going to be huge. What are those two prizes? What's the last card in his deck? If John hasn't drawn something to put cards back in his deck, maybe something like a Super Rod or an N, for instance, he is going to lose next turn. No, that's a lie, the turn after. Because Corey can just pass, and John will lose. John gets a KO, goes to two prizes remaining, but then when it comes back into his turn, he loses. Because he can't draw a card. And if you can't draw a card at the beginning of your turn, ladies and gentlemen, you lose. Now, Corey does play N. Corey might choose to be a charitable fellow and play an N. But I don't think it's on the cards, to be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it's happening. Go on, Corey. Do it. Ah, ah. Ah. Oh, oh, it's a Hex Maniac. So now, John needs a Raikou. And, well, he needs at least two more turns. So there comes a Rare Candy. It's somewhat of a futile gesture. There comes a Raikou. There comes a Rough Seas. Allows either player to heal 30 damage from each of their Lightning or Water Pokemon between turns. So John actually could heal the 30 off the Magnemite here, not that it really matters. But all he's got in his hand is free electric energy. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is game over, man. Game over. It's irrelevant. Corey can just pass here, and John will deck out next turn. Uh, and he's paralyzed, but it doesn't matter because Corey's just going to pass and win the game. Thank you very much to John and Corey for agreeing to be on stream and giving us what... I think it was a fairly entertaining matchup. I know John never really got going, but that's kind of Corey's fault. And what we saw there was Corey playing very, very well against a very unfavorable matchup. You saw a bit of a masterclass here from Corey, ladies and gentlemen. A very well-played game indeed. Uh, a thank you to Vinnie Gardner at all, and all at Mad for Miniatures if, uh, for, for letting us record this. Very nice of them. And you know the deal. Click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so, get a friend to subscribe if you have, and comment if you want to say anything. Most importantly, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio. Click the like button. Click the like button. Click the like button.